The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is the beginning of our Old Testament reading for this past Sunday, the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 to 6. In this section, the Lord Jesus is speaking prophetically about his mission for us. The Lord Jesus said, The Sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears and I have not been rebellious. I have not drawn back. My dear friends in Christ, the Holy Spirit inspired the prophet Isaiah to write these words, words of our Savior himself, about 700 years before our Savior was born. And, and just to think of the time frame here, when Isaiah wrote these words, the Israelite nation, both the northern and the southern kingdoms, they both were in a terrible shape. The northern kingdom, it had been devastated and scattered by the Assyrian army. It basically wasn't anymore. And the southern kingdom of Judah, it was getting closer and closer to the time of the Babylonian captivity. Things were going so far downhill. And the Lord had said to the Israelites, because of your sins, you were sold. Because of your transgression, transgressions, your mother was sent away. God was giving those people this sobering reminder that they were being disciplined, only disciplined because of their own sins. The Israelites, they needed to be disciplined from God because they'd been rebelling against God. They'd been worshiping idols instead of the true God. And God certainly wasn't being unfair to them when he disciplined them, when he allowed their enemies to get the best of them. And, well, we have to say this is also true for us. God isn't ever going to be unfair with us when we might need his discipline. And the fact of the matter is, is that there will be times in our lives when we need his discipline. Every child needs discipline. Every adult needs discipline because we sin. We rebel against God. But like I said, God would never be unfair with us when he does discipline us. He's never like, oh, the teacher or the parent who mistakenly thinks the wrong person was guilty of some infraction, some breaking of the rules, and, and punishes or disciplines the wrong person. Well, God could never be that way. He always uses appropriate discipline, and the purpose of his discipline for his believing children it's always because what he wants to do is make us better disciples, better children of God. Well, God will discipline us for our sins. But the wonderful thing that we have to confess is that he never makes us pay the bill for our sins. And we can be so thankful for that because if God were going to make us pay the full bill for our sins, well, that's, that's eternal punishment. So instead, our Savior suffered willingly for us so that we wouldn't have to pay that pay payment for our sins. Well, in words of prophecy in our reading, Jesus said, The Sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. Well, he's saying here that God the Father gave 
Jesus, his son, the authority to preach what he calls here the word that sustains the weary, the word that comforts and cheers our souls. And in preparing to, to preach the gospel, it says here that Jesus listened like one being taught. And here, for example, we can think about the 12-year-old Boy, Jesus, when he went to the temple and he sat at the feet of the teachers in the temple and he learned from them. And, and of course, the same thing was true when Jesus was in his home, when Mary and Joseph were teaching him as well. Jesus said, the sovereign Lord has opened my ears and I have not been rebellious. I have not drawn back. When Jesus came here to this earth, he's saying that God the Father opened his ears so that he knew that it was God's will or God's desire that everyone should live eternally. And well, he also knew that to accomplish that, what he'd have to do is he'd have to suffer and die. He'd have to go to the cross in order to pay for our sins. And he accepted that responsibility willingly. He didn't rebel. He did pray, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. But in willing submission, he added, yet not my will, but your will be done. Our Savior willingly suffered so much for us, so much that we can't even really imagine his suffering. He said, I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Oh, Jesus, he suffered so much from the Jewish leaders, from Pontius Pilate, from Herod, from the Roman soldiers, and actually from you and from me as well because it was my sins and your sins that put Jesus on the cross. But the physical suffering, even though it was huge, that was nothing. Really, in a sense, it was insignificant compared to the gross injustice of the sinless Son of God being forsaken by God, abandoned by God, of enduring the eternal punishments of hell that we deserved, and he did all that willingly for us. Our Savior suffered willingly for us. But now, how do we react when we're treated unfairly? Oh, I always like to think about those times when maybe we're driving down the the road and someone cuts in front of us and we have to jam on our brakes and maybe we just barely escape getting into an accident. When something like that happens, how do we react? Or if we're taken advantage of at work, at school, or at home, when things like that end up happening to us, we probably have feelings of anger and we probably have feelings of wanting to get even. That's our sinful nature acting within us. Well, God doesn't tell us that we should just let ourselves be treated unfairly. He doesn't say that. But he doesn't want us to pay back evil for evil either. Then we'd be no better than the person who's treating us unfairly, right? then we'd be in the same, same spot they're in. But whenever we are treated unfairly, instead of getting angry, it's good for us to recall how Jesus, our Savior, reacted to when he was treated unfairly. He didn't seek to get even. He didn't get angry at the people. Instead, he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Our Savior willingly suffered for us, and how thankful we have to be. Amen. Let's pray. 
Lord God, our Heavenly Father, as we face are faced with life's trials and troubles, we are often treated unfairly. Help us always to remember how our Savior suffered willingly for us. He did that so we can be sure of heaven. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. We pray in your name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.